8.30 p.m. I would like to call the regular Cultural Heritage Commission meeting of November 21st, 2024 to order. Before I proceed, I would like to take a moment to go over our meeting protocols for today. The South Pasadena Cultural Heritage Commission meeting for the 20, November 21st, 2024 will be conducted in person to maximize public safety while still maintaining transparency and public access, members of the public can observe the meeting via Zoom. Will staff please take roll call? Commissioner Cross? President? Commissioner Ding? Here. Commissioner Severson? Here. Vice Chair Morish? Here. Chair Lopez? Here. You have quorum. Thank you. Next, we move on to the approval of the agenda. Commissioners, do you have any requests for additions, revisions to the agenda? If so, please raise your hand. Seeing no request, I would like to vote uh, of the commission to proceed with the approval of the agenda has submitted. All those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say nay. No opposed. All right, very good. Next we move, uh, next is the disclosure by commissioners of site visits and ex expert tech contact for items on today's agenda. Commissioner Cross. Just a drive by. Thank you. Commissioner Dean. Nothing to report. Commissioner Severson. A run by. Uh, Vice Chair Marsh. Uh, nothing to report on today's meeting. So. And I uh, dro uh, drive by also. So very good. Next is public comment for general items that are not on the agenda. Has staff received any public comments in person or via Zoom? We have not received um, any public comments via in chambers. Um, any guest on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public comment on matters not on the agenda. And we do not have any public comments via Zoom. Very good. Thank you. Moving right along. I guess we go straight into uh, the public hearing on the first item on the agenda, 1840 Laura Street. We have a presentation. I will, I will have to recuse myself because I live uh, near this house. So. Very good. Thank you. That record reflect that Commission uh, Vice Chair Morris has uh, recused herself. Okay, good evening, Chair, members of the Commission, members of the public. My name is Dean Flores, Senior Planner with the Community Development Department, presenting on this item tonight. So the subject property located at 1840 Laurel Street is located on the north side of Laurel Street in between Marengo and Milan Avenues. Uh, and it's approximately 8,875 feet square feet in size and is zoned RE, residential estate, which is a single family zone for properties that are greater than 12,500 square feet. Um, with that said, this property is considered non-conforming non due to it being less than 12,500 square feet in size. So the subject cites existing conditions. Um, it was, the home was originally built in 1927 in the Spanish Revival architectural style. Uh, it's considered a contributor to the eligible Onyanta Park District. Um, uh, with the Spanish Revival style, some of it's characterized by its exterior smooth stucco, arched entryway, exterior Spanish style tiling, uh, and with an arrangement of wood and casement single hung windows a chimney with a decorative cap, and terracotta roof tiles. Uh, the site is currently single story with the house approximately 1,625 feet in size. So the proposed project is proposing a certificate of appropriateness, which includes an interior remodel, legalization of approximately 109 square feet, on the single story, a second story addition with 582 square feet, a 27 square foot rear balcony, and new wood clad windows to replace aluminum windows. So 
With respect to compliance with the city's development standards for the RE zone, uh, as shown in the table above, it's consistent uh, with all of the applicable development standards, including floor area ratio, lot coverage, setbacks, parking, and building height. This shows a proposed site plan, which shows the locations of the proposed work. Uh, again, the first story addition, it's a legalization of existing square feet. Um, it was, I believe, an office area, which will be converted into a bedroom. Second story addition is placed towards the rear of the existing home, um, and it will include a, a new bedroom and an office area. And it will all, the proposal also includes a second story balcony to the rear of the home. So this shows the existing and proposed site plans, which again shows the location of the, of the legalization of the unpermitted area. This is the proposed second story plan, um, which will be the location of the new primary bedroom and a new office area. And as you, you can see in the back, there is gonna be the, the balcony proposed at the rear of the structure. So the following slides will show the existing and proposed elevations. This is the front elevation. As you can see, uh, the second story will be set back from the front with vi uh, minimal visibility from the front uh, from the front of the property. And there's going to be no changes to the actual existing exterior front facade. This shows the side elevation, which again shows the, the placement of the second story addition, which will be set back on, uh, on this side from the, from the first floor. It also shows uh, towards the rear, it's cantilevered uh, with the location of the balcony, just to provide some differentiation. On this side here, it shows another cantilever on the second floor with wood corbels underneath. Also for the, for the unpermitted area that will be legalized, it features a flat roof, which will provide some differentiation from the existing roof pitches. And then the rear elevation, again, um, another cantilever with the wood corbels underneath and will also include the rear balcony. The applicant also did provide some 3D renderings, which give a uh, a more clear perspective of the proposed scope of work. And again, although it technically is visible from the front, it's sighted towards the rear, which would be compliant with the city's uh, design guidelines for historic homes. And as discussed, it's also compliant with the Secretary of Interior standards for differentiation. With respect to the public noticing, it was published in the South Pasadena Review on November 8th and mailed to properties within 300 feet on November 7th. We didn't receive any formal public comments, but the applicant did provide uh, neighborhood letters of support, which was provided to the commission and posted online via an additional document. With that said, staff recommends that the Cultural Heritage Commission find that the project is, is exempt from CEQA pursuant to sections 15301 for existing facilities, since it, the project includes an addition to an existing single family residence, and 15331. Additionally, to approve project number COA 24012, subject to the recommended conditions of approval. And that concludes staff's presentation. We are available for any questions. The applicant um, is here for any questions that you may have for them as well. Thank you. Thanks, Dean. Uh, does anybody have any questions for staff? No question. I don't have any questions. So does the applicant have a presentation? No, but they... Very here. good. Very good. Does anyone have uh, questions for the applicant? No question. Uh, quick question. Uh, we usually uh, like to uh, differentiate the new kind of new uh, wall surface from the old surface, what from the existing surface? I'm sorry, 
Is that, uh, can you explain? I, I'm not sure that I noticed that on the plans, but if you can explain it, that would be great. Thank you. So um, there was no differentiation in terms of wall surface, but in terms of roof line, the front roof line, um, if you could see the rear of the original house was slightly lower. So it, the addition is actually offset to show the lower roof, and then it's the addition. Instead of butting up the addition up to the higher roof of the existing house, so that it's so you see that mm -hmm. change in roof line, then you could see the differentiation where the addition starts. Yeah. So so instead of the wall, we use the roof line. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. I'm, I'm sorry. You are the Melissa owner, Sai. Right? I'm the architect. Okay. Very good. Thank you. Nice to meet you. Very good. That's all my questions. So. Uh, I will now open the public hearing staff. Are there any public comments for this item? We have not received a request for public comments in chambers. Attendees participating on Zoom, please click the hand icon to make a public com comment on item number two. And we do not have any public comments via Zoom. Okay. We will now close the public, uh, public comments and have discussion amongst the commissioners. Would someone like to begin the discussion? Um, I find the proposal acceptable. Mm -hmm. um, it's not going to impact the neighborhood negatively, mm -hmm. and um, I don't have any objection to it. And I'm prepared to accept the recommendation of staff. Thank you. Very good. Uh, anyone else? Yeah, I, I think it looks good. Um, the, it differentiates the attic vents are different, and then um, I also use different type of windows. Uh, so I, I think the project looks good, and I think it minimizes the uh, change to the to the streetscape. Very good. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, I would like to uh, compliment the architect. Uh, the drawings are very clear. Uh, so thank you very much. Uh, I think the design is is very good. Uh, it follows kind of the clues and what we're looking for, having the second story be uh, set back, and it's nicely articulated. So I I th I think it's very nice. So well done. Thank you. Anybody else? All right. Anybody would like to make a uh, uh, yeah. Um I'll make a motion uh, to approve the certificate of appropriateness, uh, 1840 Laurel Street, and that uh, we can make we can find the project exempt from CEQA, CEQA and uh, make the mandatory findings and project specific findings two, three, and six. Very good, thank you. Uh, second, I'll second. Very good. Uh, uh, can we have roll call, please? Commissioner Cross. Yes. Commissioner Ding? Yes. Commissioner Severson? Yes. Motion carries. And I oh, I'm sorry. And I approve I'm too. I'm so sorry. Chair Lopez. <laughs> All good. All good. Thank you. <laughs> Motion carries. Yes. <laughs> First three, and we're out. We can get Thank you. Congratulations. Uh, this project has been approved, uh, subject to the conditions of approval. The, these conditions. I mean, this decision is final unless an appeal is filled within 15 days from today. No construction or activity may commence during this period. Appeal forms may be obtained from the city clerk's office. Thank you. This closes the public hearing for agenda number two. Very good. All right, moving right along. We might be breaking a record today. I like it. Comments from City Council li Liaison, not here today. Comments from commissioners. Oh, wait, uh, I'll call uh, Marsh, Commissioner Marsh, sorry. We'll wait a minute. Very good. Sorry, sorry. Here you try to break a record. <laughs> just, just kidding. Anyway, uh, we are now comments. Uh, comments from commissioners. Are there any comments from our commissioners? We're really working hard to break the record today. 
Uh, we now move on to comments from our subcommittees. Are there any comments from our subcommittees? Um, I'm on two, and I've heard nothing. The Wayne and Oakline, but and okay. I guess that's fine. <laughs> yeah. No update. Same for me. I don't have. I don't have any. Well, uh, comments from staff. Uh, good evening, commissioners. I'll make this very quick so that you break your own personal best. Um, <laughs> Just want to update you briefly on our uh, personnel situation. Um, we, we were in a bit of a pinch for a period of time, um, managing several vacancies. Um, however, we are now um, in the interview phase for a, um, a planning uh, assistant position as well as the planning manager position. Those interviews will be taking place over the next couple of weeks. So um, if all works out well, um, by the beginning of the new year, we'll um, be almost uh, fully staffed. Um, on the housing side of the shop, we have a, an accepted offer for uh, a new staff person who will be joining us, um, hopefully again before the end of the year. Great. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Very good. Yes. Okay. Yes, good ones. Very good. Yes, absolutely. So we'll be um, we'll be adequately staffed for the very busy year ahead. So stay tuned for that. Um, we're in the process now of vetting our work program um, with the uh, city manager's office and with council members, and then as of the new year, we'll be kind of you know sharing the 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 schedule so stay tuned for that oh I, I had a quick question um i know that a lot of the the planning and hcd and housing element stuff was kind of influx pending sp now that it appears to be certified and will be will be certified i think december ish um but it looks like it passed um i guess what's the next step in like promulgating that into ordinance or like, like what is that process is it all just within council or is there going to be a whole thing <laughs> yeah no um of course there'll be a whole big thing um because establishing new height districts is a big deal so um that will be one of a series of um planning projects that we'll be bringing forward um over the next year um some uh, oh, well essentially all of them are related in one way or another for housing element implementation so um, just hold tight another little bit, and then we'll, we'll do a big reveal uh, soon. Yes, uh, the downtown specific plan, the general plan, the zoning code, um, you know, lots of public engagement um, is in front on that. So yeah, stay tuned. But professionals will attend those meetings as well to assist in moving them along. Yes, yes, all hands on deck. Very good. Yes, thank you. Well, thank you very much. And uh, this means that we adjourn our uh, regular Culture Heritage Commission meeting to for next meeting for Thursday, December 19th, 2024 at 6.30. We are adjourned.